My mom and dad uh, were both hard workers, and my father was a my hero in my life, as well as she is still today. Uh, he went to work in a cotton mill at the age of uh, 11 years old and supported his family. And, and I saw the movie uh, The Frogman with uh, Richard Whitmire about the Navy frogman in, in Korea. And I was a good swimmer. I loved the water. I loved water. I've been around the water all my life. And I said, well, i got to join the thing. I want to join the Navy, and I want to be a frogman. And I knew that right off the bat. South Carolina native Michael Thornton enlisted in the Navy after high school. He went through underwater demolition recruit training and out of a class of 129 was one of 12 chosen to become a member of the elite Navy SEALs. On October 31st, 1972, with the war winding down and few American troops left on the ground, Thornton was sent in with four other SEALs on a night mission. They were to gather information on the North Vietnamese and their inexorable advance to the South. Tommy Norris was the senior SEAL on the ground. Myself and Tommy and three of Vietnamese SEALs, two were, uh, were I, which I had picked. I had picked on the reason I'd, on two different tours I'd been to Vietnam, both these guys had worked for me, and they sent a young Vietnamese SEAL officer with us. And what they were going to do there will take two Navy destroyers and these, these guys are setting off the shoreline when they shoot what they call a vector with the radar. Later on, we found out the ship to the south of us shot the vector almost two degrees to the north. So when this went like this, he went to the north. They put us in almost in the, in the north Vietnam. So we slipped into this boat, paddled so close into through the water. Then we slipped into the water. Then we swam the rest of the way into the shore. So there we are patrolling all through. Tommy's on point. We got the three Vietnamese in the middle, and I'm at rear security. And we're walking through areas that there's been no way in hell they could have built all this stuff up in two months. So then, we, right then, we knew we were, we were way north. So we're heading back out to the east. To our south, we could see this village. Heard dogs barking and stuff like that. We looked off to our left, and there was a big, gigantic lagoon to the north of us. So we wanted to get as far as away we could from the village, so we moved down the beach, even though we're going north and we knew we were going in the wrong direction, we thought we'd move down that way. So we went through about four sets of sand dunes and we came to this one gigantic sand dune which stood by itself. Tommy got on the radio. Well, Quan comes crawling up and says, Mike, Mike, and he goes like this and points out this way it means he sees two enemy. So I took Ty and I gave him a hush puppy, which is a silenced 22 weapon, and I moved him down about 200 yards, 150 yards from where I was and put him in this inside doom. And I told him, when I take this guy out here, I want you to sneak up behind this guy and, and eliminate him. So the guy comes through the sand dunes. I'm like this, he comes through. I take the butt of my weapon and I've got the other guy in the corner of my eye. I could see he was way ahead of us and I just knocked this guy cold and dragged him up the beach. Then Quan came down and grabbed him and uh, turned him around and he handcuffed him. And uh, I, I started crawling down the sand dune line and I was going like this to uh, tie to sneak behind the guy and shoot the guy. Ty stood up and yelled, La De Ma Lin in Vietnamese, which stop, come here. This guy's got an AK-47. He underslings his rifle and starts shooting at Ty. Ty jumps back behind the uh, dune. I get up. I take a long shot and miss. He started running because he saw me running after him. So uh, I'm hauling can, and he goes up into the trail up into the woods in the jungle, heading towards that village. And I got, he beat me to there, and I got there, and he's running down the trail, and I stopped on one knee, took two breaths, and cranked off two rounds. I hit him in the back, and the guy fell. But when I looked up, there was a quick reaction force coming with the village with about 50 guys. So I turned around, started running back. Tommy sees me running back. He took one of these laws and opened it up, and he shot it in the tree line. He wasn't trying to hit any of the bad guys. He just wanted to hit a tree to get a large explosion, and it did hit a tree, and it exploded. These guys got down because they didn't know what they were coming against. Well, I'm on the point, and these guys were coming in, and they were leapfrogging. They would, one group would come this way, and they were in three different groups. The one was trying to flank us, and what I'd do, these guys would stick their head up, so, so when they tried to come in a vast thing, I was knocking them down pretty fast. This firefight lasted 
for quite a, for several hours. And, and I'd, I'd known that we had killed probably over 30 of these guys, and basically. And these guys made one last blast. Well, they had moved up to the sand dune. They had got me kind of pinpointed to one sand dune. I couldn't get real. They had guys shooting it each way. Tommy was trying to take some fire down this way, and I was uh, on the sand dune. Well, they threw this Chai Com grenade over. So I rolled over, the grenade went off, and I was hit like six times in my back. And I yelled and said nothing else, and you could hear Tommy yelling, Mike, Mike. So I laid on my back like this, and about four guys came over the top of this sand dune, and I shot all four of them. Two fell down, one of them fell on, my, on top of me. The other one fell down, the other two fell backwards. And I figured that time we had already wiped out more than I'd say two-thirds of their group. And they just, they didn't try to advance anymore. So I looked across this lagoon, counted 75 bad guys coming this way, and I looked, and then there's that many going this way. I looked down the beach, and I only see Dang come back by himself. I said, uh, Dang, where's, where's Tommy? Where's Dawi? And he says, Mike, Dawi's dead. I said, what? Dawi's dead. And I said, are you sure? And I could see these guys overtaking position and stuff like that. And I said, you guys stay here. And I said, I'll go back for Tommy. I went back across the open fire and they were firing at me and these and my two other guys were giving me cover fire and I was shooting guys. I got and I got the position where Tommy was last at and he was laid on the side of the sand dune and five guys were overtaking him and I killed those five guys and I grabbed Tommy and put him on my shoulders and then I heard this coming in. Just as Thornton was making his way back, the ships arrived and began firing at the enemy. The concussion blew me almost 20 feet in the air, and I had Tommy, uh, he was on my shoulders, and his body flew off my shoulders and hit the ground, and I got up, and of course, this concussion. Of course, when I heard, I heard another eight inch coming in, and I said, oh God, it got those guys' attention real fast, so they all fell back, you know, and I went over and saw Tommy and picked him up, and he said, Mike, buddy, the son of a gun was still alive. You didn't have enough time to do any type of first aid, so I grabbed him, picked him back up, these guys saw me running again. Several guys started running around the, on, on the ocean side. They were just hauling. I turned around, I fired at them. I looked back and my two boys were still there, Dang and Quan. Quan and Dang had used all their ammunition. They started swimming. I said, swim, swim. They started swimming and I was using the last of my ammunition. Uh, and I got to the, the, the surf zone and I grabbed Tommy and I put Tommy on, in my front of me like this. I started swimming like this, and these guys were chasing us, and they were shooting, and as we swam through the surf zone, you could see the bullets just going through the water, just like you do in the movie. Well, I look over to my right, and there's a little dangover flaunting in the water. You know, he was shot through his right hip and blew off his whole cheek of his butt, and he couldn't swim, so I grabbed him, put him in front of me, and uh, I had had him wrap his arms around me like this. I had my arms underneath his arms and he held on Tommy and I started this breaststroke and I swam for approximately three, three and a half hours. Thornton towed his comrade seaward for hours until they were eventually spotted and brought aboard an American ship. Uh, Tommy got back to Da Nang. They took him to Clark's Air Force Base and uh, his first operation was 19 and a half hours long. And we still, still said he wasn't gonna make it. And that was on October the 31st, 1972. Um, I'd found out I'd been put in for the medal. They said the only time I was really questioned was in front of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And he said, uh, how can I die, do all this, and still be alive? And the Chief of Naval Operations, you tell me how a dead man does it, and I'll answer your question, General. And that was it, it was signing down the rip. So I went back on October the 15th to receive the medal. I try to tell these kids of, of, of how many great sacrifices that people have had to give you the freedom to be able to do what you're doing today. Uh, uh, how many great men and women have lost their lives to, get to honor us. But I think everybody has to sacrifice for something great, you know. If, if nothing's given to you, you have to work for it. And I received my medal actually going back in to, to rescue Tommy. And uh, I mean, we have a love for each other greater than brothers, uh, which, you know, it's just, uh, you know, until you die together almost and uh, you understand what living's all about. And then I look at life a lot different than everybody else. And a lot of other people, because I live every day to my fullest and, and which we all do in our own little way, you know.